Welcome back. Uh, in this video, we'll be talking about section 2.3, Techne Techniques for Computing Limits. Uh, and we're going to be looking at this piecewise defined function. Uh, so f of x can be one of two things, depending on where the x values are. So we've got that f of x is x squared plus 1 if x is less than minus 1. And f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1 if x is greater than or equal to minus 1. And the problem is asking us to find uh, three different things. We're looking to find a, uh, what's the limit as x goes to minus 1 from the left of f of x. What's b is the limit as x goes to minus 1 from the right of f of x. And then c is the limit as x goes to minus 1 of f of x. So there's really two ways that I can go about this problem. Uh, and I want to look at both of them so that you can get two different perspectives on how this should go. So the first one is that I could just simply kind of plug things into the appropriate place up here. And I can ask, okay, if I'm coming at x equals minus 1 from the left, okay, from the left being the negative side, then which of these two guys am I going to use? Uh, in other words, is x less than minus 1 when I come from the left? Or is x greater than or equal to minus 1 as I come from the left? And the answer is from the left, we're looking at x is less than minus 1. So I use this guy. And so I'd say, well, what's uh, the y value getting close to as we head towards minus 1? And to do that, I could just plug in the minus 1 because this is a polynomial and I would get the answer 2. So the answer here, since I'm using this piece of the function, and as I approach minus 1, I could just plug in the minus 1, and I'd get the limit value of 2. For part b, I'd say, OK, I'm taking the limit as x goes to minus 1 from the right. If I'm taking the limit as x goes to minus 1 from the right of this function, I ask, OK, which of these two pieces of this function are being used when I'm on the positive side of minus 1? And the answer is x must be greater than or equal to minus 1. So I'd plug in minus 1 up here, if possible, and I can. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. And then part C is simply asking, are these two values the same? And the answer is they are not. So this does not exist. OK, so that's one way of looking at this problem is just simply saying, OK, which piece of this function am I using for part A? Which piece of this function am I using for part B? And then part C is pretty self-explanatory from A and B. Another way I could look at this is I could say, graphically what's going on. Can I graph this function and what does it look like? So let's make a quick graph here of the function. The interesting point here is minus 1. So here's minus 1. And I say, OK, so what does the function x squared plus 1 look like? Well, that's a nice parabola, x squared plus 1 moves that parabola up 1. So let's say that this is 1. Then the parabola would look sort of like this. But the parabola is only happening when x is less than minus 1. So just from here on up. That's the only place where this is happening. Over here, that doesn't exist because this function is only happening when x's are less than minus 1. So over here. And notice I put an open circle here. Uh, to remind myself that that's not necessarily happening at minus 1, just to the left of minus 1. Then if I look at, at the second part of this piecewise defined function, I have the square root of x plus 1. And that is a <coughs> square root of x function translated to the left one unit. So that this would be the square root of x function, and I'll move it over 1. So uh, I actually will fill in the dot here because it's x is greater than or equal to minus 1. And then just put in the square root function. So now here's a graph of this function. 
And for some of you, maybe you think more graphically than you do maybe numerically or algebraically. If you think more graphically, you might want to draw a picture of the graph first and then ask these same questions and uh, you get equally good results. So let's look at this one more time through the lens of this graph. What's the limit as x goes to minus 1 from the left? Okay, so as I come in from the left, uh, let's see, this isn't perfectly drawn, but that would be a 2. Let me redraw this real quick. This would be at 1. And so what's the limit as x goes to minus 1 from the left? Coming in from the left, what are we getting close to? We're getting close to 2. As we come in from the right, we're coming in from the right. What are we getting close to as a y value? We're getting close to 0. Those two don't equal. So the limit at this point, it obviously doesn't exist. It actually makes a jump right at the point negative 1. So the limit doesn't exist. And that is how we would compute these various limits on problem number 33.